Leia here from LeiaForSci.com and in this video we'll look at how to find RNS configurations for chiral centers with complex or lengthy substituents. You can find this entire video series along with the stereochemistry practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website LeiaForSci.com slash chirality. At this point I'll assume you're comfortable with finding RNS configurations for symbol molecules and if you're not Make sure you go back and watch those videos before you continue with this one. But now we want to look at what happens if you have longer substituents or the different substituents start with the same atom. To remind you, we're ranking substituents based on their atomic number and this is the guide that I have on the cheat sheet to help you remember which atoms will outrank which. So we look at our molecule and determine that we're comparing carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon. We look back at our little guide and realize we're just comparing carbon. How do we figure out which substituent will rank higher or lower if every single one starts with carbon? What you have to do in this case is go deeper into the molecule. And to show you how to do that, I'm going to rewrite each substituent and show you how to analyze it. Here we have the four substituents keeping the same color so you can tell what's what. But before we continue, I want to point out we're not looking at the number of atoms bound, we're looking at bonds to the atom. Wait, isn't that the same thing? In most cases it is, but when you have a pi bond, for example, a double or a triple bond, you have to imagine every bond as its own priority. So looking at this aldehyde where we have a carbon double bound to oxygen, that's like having a carbon bound to two oxygen atoms. That oxygen is going to rank twice. So I'll rewrite the carbonyl as two separate oxygen atoms to help you remember that and to help you rank. The first thing we do is look at the atoms directly bound to the chiral carbon and compare them. But in this case, every single one is carbon. So we cancel it out. If you cancel it out, you have to look at what is the one absolute highest priority on the atom you just canceled out. Why do I say on the atom? Because for example, we have a sulfur here, but it's jumping. We can't skip the carbon. We have to instead look at what is attached to the carbon that we just crossed out in red. For the aldehyde, we have an oxygen. For this group, we can choose any of the two carbon atoms. It doesn't matter. Carbon is carbon. For the green group, we have an oxygen. And for the orange group, we have a hydrogen. Now we have something to compare to. We're comparing oxygen to carbon to oxygen to hydrogen. Hydrogen is always your lowest priority. And that means carbon to hydrogen will be number four. Or you can remember the trick I told you in a previous video, where if there's no hydrogen or deuterium, methyl is always your lowest priority, and we just proved it. Then we have carbon, which is outranked by oxygen, and since the purple and green each have oxygen, the entire blue substituent is the second lowest because it's carbon bound to carbon, making this monstrosity number three. And one and two will be between the purple and green since they each have one oxygen. Don't forget, the purple oxygen is really just one bond to oxygen equaling the green bond to oxygen, so we cancel it out. And then we look at the next highest priority, not on the atom we just canceled out, but the initial carbon atom that we canceled out for all of them. In the purple group, we have another oxygen atom as the highest priority because the double bound counts twice. On the green, we only have hydrogen as our next highest priority. Oxygen outranks hydrogen. Therefore, the aldehyde is priority number one, outranking the CH2OH, which is priority number two. The rest is pretty straightforward. Cancel out number four. Trace the path from one to two to three. And since the top goes to the right or clockwise, this molecule is R. But what if the atoms are not written out so clearly? What if instead you're given a molecule that looks like this? Here we have a molecule with one chiral carbon. And coming out of it, we have three carbon-containing substituents, a phenyl group, a cyclohexyl group, and an isopropyl. Where's the fourth substituent? Don't forget, we have an invisible hydrogen going to the back. Whenever you're given skeletal structure, and there's an invisible hydrogen going to the back, you should automatically know that hydrogen is number four. 
So instead of writing hydrogen, just put a number four towards the back. You're gonna cross it out. It's gonna be out of your way. If you're comfortable enough with this, you can even ignore it completely and just look at the three you're given, rank those three, find RNS, never bothering to draw the hydrogen. Mentally acknowledge it, but don't draw it. So let's take a look at our priority. We're comparing carbon to carbon to carbon. They're all the same, so we cancel them out. We have to find the next highest priority on the red carbon that we canceled out. For the one on the left, we have a carbon. For the phenyl group, we have any carbon. For the cyclohexyl, we have a carbon. Once again, they cancel out. So we don't look at the green carbon. Instead, we go back to the red carbon and see what is the next highest priority on the carbon. The isopropyl has another carbon. The cyclohexyl has another carbon. The phenyl group has another carbon. But don't forget, the pi bond implies yet another bond to carbon. But once again, they all cancel out. So we look for the next highest priority. Remember the phenyl has a pi bond, which means this counts as a second carbon. The isopropyl has an invisible hydrogen. The cyclohexyl has an invisible hydrogen over there, because it should have four bonds. And that means the phenyl group having that second carbon due to the pi bond outranked the isopropyl and cyclohexyl, making this group priority number one. Going back to the isopropyl and cyclohexyl, they both had the hydrogen, so they cancel out. What we do now, if we canceled out every single atom on the initial red carbon, is we go to the next carbon atom and see what is highest priority on it. And that means we would go to any one of the green carbons that we ruled out. So for the isopropyl, we'll show one of the hydrogen atoms. That's the highest priority because all I have left are hydrogen atoms. It doesn't matter which one I choose. So we'll choose any one hydrogen atom, but for the cyclohexyl, the highest priority is a carbon in addition to the hydrogen atoms. But carbon is higher priority, so that's what we're looking at. Carbon outranks hydrogen, making it higher in priority. We have group number one, making this the second as group number two, isopropyl as group number three. And then we simply cancel out number four, trace from one to two to three, and our molecule is R. For even more practice finding RNS on simple and tricky molecules, make sure you try the stereochemistry quiz posted on my website, layerforsci.com slash chirality. For even more chirality, be sure to watch the upcoming videos where I show you how to find RNS for Fisher projections, Newman projections, cyclohexane, and chair conformations, and then show you how to compare molecules to determine if they're the same or if they're enantiomers using a combination of logic, the swap method, and probably never redrawing the molecule. You can find all this with my practice quiz and cheat sheet on my website at layerforsci.com chirality.